So in today's video, I want to cover what I use for my everyday carry, street photography, and travel journeys. With my Japan trip only one week away now, I do want to show you and give you some insight on what gear I use and why I've chosen it. This is overall a compact, light, minimal carry for what I use on a daily basis when I'm doing photography. This is my hobby, I do nothing professionally. This is what I do for fun, so obviously you can take this information with a grain of salt. The reason I want to go minimal with my gear is because not only is it light, but it makes me more comfortable. It doesn't really handicap you in terms of photography. I don't want to be walking around the street for many hours of the day, weighing my shoulders down with around a few kilos or maybe more of gear. In the past, I used to have a seven kilo pack of gear and that was too much for me to handle in one day. Now, I reduced my gear over many years to something that I'm happy with I can carry on a daily basis. And in the past, I did shoot with the zoom lenses from Fuji. The 16 to 55 and the 50 to the 140 are amazing lenses, no doubt. I have had many fun moments with those lenses. But for travel uses and street use, I just don't see them viable, which makes me move over to the prime lenses I have. I have the 23mm prime, which I just acquired recently. And I've had also the 33mm prime for a while now, which has been one of my favorite lenses. But for this trip, I will be using the 23mm f2 prime. Not only is it compact and could play fit in the palm of your hands or pocket, but also has a decent aperture of f2 for the low light performance as well as maybe decent bokeh for portraits and other items that you're choosing. And to pair with that 23mm lens, I have my Fujifilm X-T4 which I'm recording with right now. I have had this camera for nearly two years now and so far has been the most fun shooting experience with any camera I have had yet. Not only has it got a wonderful exterior that looks like a film camera, but also has filmic presets built into the camera to give you a wonderful film look. Despite I don't really actually use those, I actually edit most of my photos through Lightroom and have my own style that I like. But nonetheless, it is a nice touch to have in the camera. The reason I have the XP4 is not only for its beautiful looks, but it has amazing imagery and good video quality from what I can tell. After all, I'm no videographer or cinematographer, but I think the video does the job for me. And after all, I am shooting this video with the X-T4 as we speak. Moving on to the next item in my kit is the Contax T2. This is my first premium point and shoot I've ever owned in any digital or film world. It is definitely a well-known camera as you probably have heard on the internet by certain people. You don't need to name them really. But Thanks to them, the prices have gone up quite a bit. Only reason I bought this camera was I found a decent deal on eBay around 850 US dollars, which in most cases is still pretty expensive for a film camera that one day may break. And I've shot roughly around 20 rolls of film for this camera and I've only owned it for around six months or a little bit more. So you can say how much I like it then. And the last camera in this kit is not really a camera, but I should say it is. It's a POV camera, the DJI Action 2. This is my first action camera. Actually, I lie. I did own a GoPro back in the day. And yeah, I may not have used that at all and sold it because I had no use for it. But this time, having the interest of filmmaking videos and photography, I kind of want to do POV videos in the future. So this will be my POV camera when I'm wandering the streets of Japan. And maybe you can expect some content with that if the camera works well enough for me. The reason I got the DJI Action 2 was actually its small form factor. It has two modules that can split up. So the bottom module being the battery and SD slot, and the top module just being the camera itself, which can attach to your magnetic lanyard, which clips underneath your shirt. So I haven't really extensively used this one yet. So I'm just hoping from the test footage I've used so far, that it will do the job once I actually put it in the streets of Japan. And lastly, to tie up this whole kit is the camera bag itself. This is the Bell Ray Adventure 10 liter camera sling. I've only owned this bag for just over a week now, so I can't really give my two cents on it, other than the fact that the bag came broken to me on arrival. So that wasn't good, but I did get a replacement after that. So thank you, Bell Ray. Overall, I'm not going to leave my review on this as I've only had it for just over a week, as I said. But in the bag, I have the Contax T2, the DJI Action 2, as well as my Fujifilm. But of course, I'm recording with the Fujifilm X-T4, 
So in the bag, I'm just using the X Pro One as somewhat of a reference to see what the camera would look like in the cubes. Now, the Bellroy does have some dividers, although they're not removable, which is not a bad thing. I do quite like this system here, but I do find them a bit flimsy, so maybe I'll do a proper review in the future, as I mentioned. In the front pockets, I do have my wallet, my passport, and my AirPods, which are some accessories I'll be using throughout my travels. And obviously, my minimal camera gear is taking up very little space. Overall, this is a decently sized sling. I'd say it's a bit on the larger side compared to most, but for me, this does the job and gives me some extra space where I can maybe put another lens in there or even more film to shoot, obviously, with the T2 upon my travels. Anyway, I think that will conclude today's video. I am not that great at speaking in front of the camera, so I want to keep this short and brief and no fluff about it. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this. This is actually my first video on the channel, so if you want to see more Japan journeys, film photography, digital photography, or any other lifestyle videos I may do in the future, whatever it will be, hopefully you'll be there to watch it.